Okay, so this is what the brewery currently looks like. It's a complete mess in here, and in this video, I'm going to show you why it looks this way. I've been working on transforming this old woodworking shed into the home brewery of my dreams, and after about six months of on and off work, it looked incredible. With less than 100 square feet of interior space, I was able to fit just about everything I need to make great beer at home. There's cold storage, a grain mill, a killer all-in-one brewing system, barrels, fermenters, the list goes on. But the one thing I don't have is a fermentation chamber, and that's about to change. In order to fit this fermentation chamber in the brewery, I had to remove this rolling toolbox from the entryway that I was using as my packaging station and to store some grains. In a brewery this size, you have to prioritize every square inch and get creative with how you use space. So, I'll think of another solution for packaging later, and now I can bring in the fermentation chamber. After shuffling a couple things around, this is where I landed. This thing is not small, so I'm just happy I was able to make it fit. Until today, I've been using this small glycol chiller to maintain fermentation temperatures. This is the Brewbuilt Icemaster Max 2, which I think is also called the G20 in some markets. It does a great job, but it's really best used when you have several fermentations going at the same time. So when I'm brewing a lot, this thing is great, but when things are a little bit slower, glycol chillers can be pretty inefficient. And that's why today I'm adding the wrapped fermentation chamber to the brewery. Big thanks to Kegland for sending this over. A fermentation chamber is able to better insulate your fermenter, trapping the cold on the inside of the chamber. If you only need to cool one fermenter, this can be a better option when compared to a glycol system. Having both a glycol chiller and a fermentation chamber will give me maximum flexibility, and I gotta say, this fermentation chamber looks great. There's a built-in digital controller on the top of the unit, and the stainless steel door would look great in just about any space. On the inside, there's a little stainless steel on top, but it's mostly white plastic with tons of options to adjust the height of the interior shelves. I plan to use this chamber with these mini unit tanks from Brew Tools, and it looks like I could squeeze two 20 liter tanks in here if I really try. Now, I just said how great the stainless steel door looks, but if you want, you can swap that out for a glass front door to make it look even better. All you have to do is remove a few screws from the top of the unit so you can get under the hood. Once you get that open, you'll see a few more screws you need to remove from the top of the hinge, and then you can lift the stainless door off the bottom hinge. From there, just reverse the process with the new door, and boom, we have ourselves a new door. And after putting the top back together, here's what it looks like. Now there are several other things I can do to customize the wrap chamber, but I'll save those for another video. I can run automated fermentation schedules with this, pair it with other wrap devices, easily pass CO2 in and out of the chamber, lots of cool stuff to play with. If you have any questions about the wrap chamber, let me know in the comments and I'll try to answer them in some future videos. I definitely want to run it through some tests to see how well it can control temperatures, and I'm also curious which of my fermenters will fit in here. On top of that, I want to see what else it can do besides beer. So I'm thinking I might try to grow some mushrooms in there or maybe cure some salami or something. Tons of things I can do with this and I'm stoked to add it to the brewery. But that's not the only reason this brewery is a mess. 
Now that the snow has melted, I've also started working on getting some water hooked up to the shed. Even with all the ideas and suggestions you guys gave me, it's been a little messy and I've hit some roadblocks like this anti-siphon valve. It makes sense why these are standard, but in my case, I want to send water into the shed via this tap, so I need to wait for another part to be delivered before I can move forward. Jeez. With this project, it seems like I take two steps forward only to take one step back, but I'm making progress and when it's all said and done, this will be one hell of a home brewery. My name's Dan, this is Hops and Gnarly. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I'll see you again soon. Hey, if you want a fermentation chamber but don't want to spend a bunch of money on it, check out this video or look for the link down below.